Okay, today we're going to cover a custom GPT web scraper that I built using API Ninja. Here's a web scraper right here. Click on scrape a website. And the web scraper will ask you, well, what website do you want to scrape? So you put in the URL. In this case, we're going to look at the hackathon. This is the 2023 end of year hackathon for Lab Lab AI. And you click on that, and it's going to go there and it's going to scrape the plain text data. Now, this is actually fairly easy to build. And this is a lightweight web scraper. So it really depends on the API. This one is free, but you can go buy some that are a lot heavier than this and bring down a lot more information. This is just a light one. But let me show you how it's built because no matter what API you're doing, you're going to do it the same way. So let's take a look at the web scraper itself. It's going to explore and click on the edit button for the web scraper. And there's actually three parts here. There's a config file, there's the uh, schema file, and then there's authorization. So let's take a look at all three of those. So for the config file, if you open that up, it just has three steps. When scrape a website is click, follow the three steps. And step one is to ask a user what website they would like to scrape. You saw it do that. Then for step two, it says use scrape web data, that's the operation ID, to scrape plain text data only from the website meeting the conditions. And notice I put that in all caps to make sure, emphasize to do that. And the last step was to ask the user if they would like to drill down, search another URL, or finish. Now notice these words condition and finish are in caps. And here's my finish and condition. They're actually like subroutines. So for finish, make a list of what was accomplished that could be used as prompt to further automate the scripting process. So uh, scraping process. So I actually may decide I want to build a prompt to do all this automatically. This is going to construct a prompt for me at the end. And for conditions, um, it would be the GPT will adhere to ethical guidelines and respect website terms of service, kind of that safety and security piece at the end. So that's all there is to, to the configuration file. Now let's take a look at the schema. So if you scroll down here, there's a place for the schema, and that's under actions. And we click on actions, that's from API, API ninjas.com. And here's the schema. Now, how do I come up with this schema? Well, it's actually fairly easy. If you go to the Ninjas API, and let's take a look at this particular URL. Let's look at some examples here. Go back to the APIs. We're looking at the web scraping API. Here's our web scraper. Let's click on that. And you can see if you scroll down, it has the URL, and it has what the response output should look like. And at the bottom of that, it also has, you can look at the um, it's the get method that we're going to use. So we're going to actually just copy all of this. Don't worry about how it's arranged or anything like that. We'll just grab it. And we'll go to uh, ChatGDP. And we'll say the ChatGDP, OK, let's write the schema. So write an open API, not open AI, but open API 3 schema with server URL. and operational ID for the following or from the following. So it's going to take all that, look at it, and examine it, and write the schema for you. All right, that's that. And you can see as it's doing that, there it is right in that schema. That's your operation, excuse me, your open API 3.0. It's got your operation ID, and it's got your 200, 400, 401, methods. And at the end, you can see it's an X API key. That's important for us to know. That's where we're going to get our authorization from. So you're going to copy that and you're going to put that into your um, web scraper for the schema. And you paste that in. Now, if for some reason, if you get an error, that error will show up at the bottom. And then you can take that error and put it back into ChatGBT and say, fix this for me and it'll fix it. In addition, what's really nice is it's got this test method. So you can actually click on test, and it'll test and see if it's working. It's just amazing. You just put the website in here, and it knows where to put it and make this code work. It's fantastic. The last thing we need to do is we need to actually set up that API key. Notice this is an X API key, some authentication, excuse me, at the top. So I click on that, and I mark custom X API key. And then I'll go to uh, the Ninjas website. I'll go to my account. 
And it's free, so you just set that XAPI key up, and you, and I won't show key because I don't want to change it, but you get your key from here. And once you have that key, you go back to ChatGPT, paste it in, and save, and you're ready to roll. You're ready to start scraping websites. And with that said, we can try it out one more time. And when you save it, if you want to make it public, then you're going to want to put the privacy policy. I just took the open AP. I took the open AI policy and put it, put it in here, save it. And you can actually, if you have this link, you can actually run this as well. And you can see the links at the top of the screen. I'll also put that in the details of this tube. Let's look at the view. And let's try it one more time. First thing you do is you click on scrape a website. It starts step one. All right, it's going to ask you what URL you want to paste in. So let's paste in that URL. Now we're going to go to step two. It's going to start scraping all the plain text data. All right, and it's talking to the Ninja API. And it's bringing back the, the plain text data. Not all of it. Almost looks like a summary. But once again, this is a lightweight scraper. If you want to get something a little bit more hefty, you might pay for it. But you'll set it up the same way. And you might say, oh, hey, take a look at the event schedule. Okay, so look deeper into event schedule. And it'll scrape that for you as well. And there you go. It'll get you a little bit more about the event. And when you're done, you can say, hey, I'm done. And then it'll give you a summary of what you uh, what you did, which is pretty nice. OK, well, that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, go ahead and subscribe. We've got some really cool stuff coming in the future. This is very exciting for us. And you'll also be seeing a lot of these hackathons. As a matter of fact, if you're interested in joining up and working with me on a hackathon, just go to the uh, Lab Lab AI and click on Accelerate Innovate. Register for that and let me know. And I'll pull you in. I am looking for a few members. Uh, this hackathon does start December 27th and will end January 10th. If you haven't been a, a part of the hackathon, it's a great way to learn. And I look forward to hearing from you further. Thank you so much. This was Mike Lively.